Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley and we're going to be starting a campaign for Caesar in Gaul. So as you can see here, I have chosen to be the Roman. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I haven't played too much of Caesar in Gaul. I haven't had time. Uh, just chilling back on break, uh, seeing people for the holidays, friends, family, and all that. I hope you guys are having your own uh, festive break and having a good time. Uh, in any case, we're going to be picking up as the Romans. I figured I'd play as the Romans because that way it's easier to story tell Caesar's conquest. And uh, it would be noble to try and oppose him, but I figured we're going to go ahead and take the, the route of conquest. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and see. We have Caesar's Legion, uh, Legion Legio 1 Gallica. So they're going to be up here, and uh, let's actually take a look at this in the historical context. Strategic overview. So when Caesar moved into Gaul, he did so because he was part of the triumvirate, so the three leaders, and he was uh, he stood for consulship and with the help of um, Crassus and Pompey, he was able to secure um, the consulship position. Uh, he pushed through a bunch of legislation and tried to uh, reinforce his power when he was in uh, as a consul, but a lot of the stuff he did upset the standing members of the Senate. He did a lot of stuff that might have been not necessarily... Um, illegal but uh, questionable and specifically to his opponents they could craft what he did as being illegal and so what Caesar was worried about was his enemies in the Senate would try and prosecute him so he was seeking for an extension of his imperium so that's why he stood for uh, proconsulship which is basically an extension of your role in a position so proconsulship is the extension of his role as a consul and he was given access to Cisalpine Gaul which is over here and Transalpine Gaul here uh, he was given the governance of those regions and as he was up there he actually started to rally up and uh, muster some legions so the first uh, plan of action was he needed to clear his debts from his campaigning back in Rome and so he needed to amass um, a fortune and that was going to be mostly through conquest but the way Caesar did it was in a sort of passive-aggressive way. So Caesar would come into Gaul, and instead of outright declaring war on everyone, what he did is he would interfere in local, mat interfere in local matters and say that he was here to help certain tribes fight against um, other tribes, and he would sort of do that type of thing, and any time he would fight a tribe, all those who helped that tribe, Caesar would then go and fight those tribes and do punitive actions, and then whoever helped those tribes, Caesar would use that as a pretext for more conquest, and that's how he kind of dominoed his way through Gaul. But the first step, domino, I guess, in that whole uh, series of dominoes in this conquest of Gaul was going to be the Helvetii, here, so the Helvetii had been pre preparing for several years. I think for four years they had prepared to migrate from their location in Switzerland, and they were going to move into uh, more fertile territory. And yeah, here they give us some uh, some background here. Yeah, so the Helvetii here are going to be pressured by the Germans, and what they did is they prepared for an exodus from their territory. They're going to move out here and try and settle in some of the lands here. And so that was their move because they were feeling pressure from some of the tribes in the region. The uh, fields that they had weren't producing as well as they had. And so what they did is they burned down all their villages after years of preparation, and that sort of signified their final um, culmination of their plans to leave their territory. They burned down their villages as a sign that they would never turn back, and so the whole population displaced and started moving down here. Many of the tribes down here were upset at this change of pace, this uh, this change to their lifestyle, because you were going to have this huge tribe moving through here. Um, you know, they, were, they had peaceful intents. They sent delegations asking for safe passage, uh, but if anyone basically tried to oppose them, they would try and flatten them. So these tribes were not happy. They weren't sure where the Helvetii were going to settle, and so Caesar comes in, and as a pretext of trying to defend these tribes, he says he'll uh, help prevent these guys uh, from migrating through here. So Caesar blocks their passage, he ends up uh, blocking their river crossings, builds a line of forts, and even attacks some of the boats that they crafted to come across. Anyways, once the Helvetii mo move around Caesar and his forces, they go further and further into Gallic territory here, and uh, Caesar actually trails them and sort of follows them, and they end up fighting in the end. Caesar is desperately um, lines up his troops in a triple line, and all these Helvetii masses fight. Caesar is able to defeat them, and he pushes them back. So that's kind of the start of this campaign, and that's kind of where we take off right here. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at our dick uh, technology tree. So I like what they've done. So the first one is going to be politics on this side and development. So development is going to be infrastructure, culture, and military. So as opposed to the main campaign where we have military and then more of the civil side, now it's going to be um, all three of these sort of put together. What you had previously is all on one uh, side. And then the other side is going to be politics where you can buy things. So uh, first step is Mark Antony. And then it looks like you can get support for Caesar, Crassus, and Pompey. So these are going to be the triumvirs. I'll talk about those later. But let's go ahead and do um, 
Probably land management. I want to secure this. I don't have enough money to invest in politics just yet. Um, let's take a look at the diplomacy. So, uh, okay, the Allobroges, the Adui are going to be staunch allies of the Romans up here. They actually never turned on Caesar until later in the mass revolt of all of Gaul. They were staunch allies uh, for Caesar, and Caesar treated them very kindly. Uh, and looks like we even have Massalia here, the Greek town. Very friendly. Looks like, yeah, we're at war. Or, yeah, very hostile towards the Helvetii. And then some of the German tribes I'm sure we're going to have to deal with in the near future. But uh, let's go ahead and and go straight into the campaign map and see what we got going on here for our territory. So, we got a spy up here. I'm going to send the spy up towards the Helvetii uh, town up here, see if they have any army. Huh. Looks like they should be pretty easily defeated. I think with Caesar, I'm worried about force marching him because of just the amount of force here. So let's move Caesar up through here. See what we can encounter. Okay, it looks like we have an army here. I'm going to go ahead and fight them uh, soon, but let's go ahead and take a look at our town. So it looks like everyone is Minus, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. So everyone starts off pretty unhappy. And, uh, yeah, it looks like we have another army down here. So our first thing is probably going to be to try and um, make everyone happy again. I think I'll keep this guy here for the moment. And let's see why they're unhappy. Public order, okay. And details, cultural differences, taxes, slaves. So it looks like if I can get rid of the taxation, that should help us out. I know that'll hurt our income, but uh, I want these guys happy before I can move out. And uh, let's take a look actually at the treasury. Income next turn, yeah, 1700. So that's fine. I'm um, going to make those people happy. Looks like I am also able to enact edicts. Uh, let's do uh, bread and games. So I think if I do bread and games, that should increase population happiness. Bread and games. And let's go ahead and try and upgrade. Um, probably Amphitheater want to make these guys happy and save money for that settlement here. I'm going to try and expand some of my cities. Let's just expand these cities out. And I don't have really enough money to invest in these. So maybe a theater, perhaps not the best choice of uh, initial investments. Four food, 80 wealth, Roman city, five food, two growth per turn. So I think, um, hmm, so everyone's going to be unhappy. I think this is the cheapest way to increase um, happiness for these guys. Latrines, public order, Latin, fountains. I think this is the cheapest. I'll go ahead and invest in that and uh, keep saving up money. So we have another section here. I think what I'll do is make a quarry, start turning up the, uh, get some money going there, and uh, yeah, let's just hold off here. I'll deal with these settlements, make them happier uh, next turn, and I think with the edicts in effect and some of the tax exemptions, yeah, for example, for these guys, we should be getting them up in the green. And Caesar's forces up here. Let's go ahead and try and engage these troops here. Halveti stationed up here. I'm guessing they're going to run away if we can try and engage them. Yep. So let's go ahead and keep pushing up here. I want to have at least an engagement, see what it's like on the campaign map. Uh, looks like they're out of our striking distance, so I'm going to keep moving on to their city up here. Um, from what I can tell from my spy, it looks like they are uh, relatively undefended. I don't want to do any spy actions yet, just because that costs money. Um, let's open up diplomacy, see if we can get anything going. Already trading, let's see what else we can do with them. Mm, okay, looks like we're already in pretty good reputation with these guys. Uh, these guys are on the border with me, so these guys, as I said, are going to be staunch allies. We have not, oh, looks like we cannot trade, so that's too bad. But let's see what we can do with them. Let's see if I can get them to declare war against the Helvetii. Yeah. Well, I've never been really good at politics, uh, so let's leave that to Caesar himself. He will deal in the politics of blood. So I'm going to go ahead and end the turn, see what kind of happens. I'm wondering what the tribes will do. looks like those guys have retreated into the forest. Edicts issued. Let's see how that affected our happiness. So um, it's stabilized, so at least that's good. We're not going to be falling any further. gives me time to try and get more going on. Uh, I do want to later expand our sea trade. It looks like we don't have many places to trade with at the moment, which is too bad. Um, so this will increase public happiness, so they'll go back in the positive. 
Um, looks like we need something for this settlement here. And uh, how are they doing on food otherwise? Eight food. So the main problem with these guys is going to be cultural differences, slaves, and taxes. So taxes, I still want to tax them. Uh, I still want to keep bringing the money. So that means we probably need infrastructure to try and cover up some of those losses. 100 wealth. Uh, that's going to knock up most of my cash. Let's go ahead and do that so that way we'll have more base uh, generation of uh, money here. And then I can knock out the taxes to try and make them happy. Um, anyways, let's keep... Actually, let's move our spy up here. I want to see if there's any other armies in the region. Okay, looks like it's ripe for the plucking. Let's go ahead and just besiege this city. Pretty large garrison force. Uh, let's go ahead and actually go ahead and go right into one of these sieges so I can show you what it looks like, see what the campaign is going to resemble uh, down on the battlefield itself. So I'm guessing it hasn't changed too much, but the main thing that is going to be different is going to be seasons. That's something that they've tried to advertise a lot for this campaign. And I like the scope of it first and foremost. I like being able to play in a concentrated region. It's kind of like in Napoleon, the... Um, Oh, what was that called? The expansion that they had, the Peninsular Campaign, I think, when you're fighting the Spanish. It's kind of like a focused approach to that. Um, and I like the campaign map from what I've seen so far. Many of the units I haven't been able to try yet. I only played one or two multiplayer battles, so I'm not yet uh, at ease with all different units. But it looks like, you know, standard Legionnaires with some auxiliary troops, cavalry, and, awesomely enough, some artillery pieces. Defenders are going to be relatively large. But uh, I think I can crack them pretty easily. And what I'm most interested to see actually is what the settlement looks like if they've created some new settlements, uh, more detailed ones, as opposed to the, the more generic ones we saw in uh, the Grand Campaign. And some of those were a little bland. And especially when I was attacking Gaul, I didn't feel like it really had the, the hilltop fortresses that uh, you would have seen historically. But uh, looking at this little map here, it looks like we're on our way to a pretty epic battle. Dry, let's go ahead and start the deployment. So from what I can tell, this looks uh, very nice. The city itself looks awesome. Many of these details were here before, but uh, I think they just overhauled the whole Gallic theme. Um, and I like these little hamlets, these little townlets out here. I wish we had a, a multiplayer map. Um, well, I guess you could probably select this now, but a uh, multiplayer map that was just like this, a themed one that was open, wavy terrain, but still with some houses. Uh, I'll probably look around for that. Anyways, back to the battle itself. Let's go ahead and move these guys out here. Um, scout riders, I'm guessing we're not really going to need these guys too much until we breach the walls. And, um, yeah, we're just going to line up our siege equipment right here. And I think if I'm going to assault the main gate, probably going to send in some of these mercenary troops. Probably come through the walls right here. And I think that should be good. I'm going to keep these legionnaires... Um, try and keep them as healthy as possible. I don't really want to lose my legionaries. I'm going to try and care for them as well as Caesar did. Get these guys up here and um, keep Caesar safe. And uh, yeah, looks like that should be good. Let's put these guys off of fire. We'll start the battle. And all right, let's take out this fort and hopefully that should be able to collapse this. Celtic skirmishers, lots of troops here lined up, so it looks like they're preparing for the battle. Oh yeah, another reason why I wanted to take Caesar is because I'm going to be on the attack for a lot of the time, so I'm going to be the one taking over settlements. So that means that I won't have to deal with the AI's problems when it comes to attacking. I don't, I wouldn't want to be the defender as the Gauls for what would be an epic siege, and I have the campaign AI or the battlefield AI. Have the Romans kind of just sit there and do nothing. So I'm kind of taking the reins uh, of power into my hand to avoid some of the the glitchiness of that. And, um, yeah, let's go ahead and start moving up our siege towers. Probably get some skirmishers up here in case they decide to sally out. I really doubt they will. And, mm, poison rounds. I think with these guys we want to put them on explosive. Let's go ahead and target tribesmen here. And 86%. It should be pretty glorious. Perfect, look at that. Destroyed a whole unit right there. So that's very cool. I really do like the destruction of the walls here. Um, it looks much better than it was in the old Total Wars, um, but still you have the problems where there's units stationed up here and they just all collapse and die. Um, so dumb for the AI to do that. Let's see if we can't um, collapse another section of the wall. Uh, probably right here. 
will be good. So we'll keep blowing these guys up, doing a fair amount of damage. I think what I'll do is actually move my Legionnaires up in Testudo form. Get them to start crawling up right there. That'll look very epic. Moving up this wall of shields and swords. Moving up here. More of these catapults, or er, siege equipment shooting off in the distance. Ladders on the right moving up. This is what Total War should be like. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy I can lead these legions with Caesar at the forefront. Actually, let's move him up here. Not within the line of fire, but uh, at least relatively close. Looks like there's only one siege tower here. I'm going to wait till we've knocked out a couple more of these troops here. And uh, the legions have moved up. So they're going to go ahead and position themselves right up here. I'm a little worried about these towers. I don't know how powerful they're going to be. So I'm going to hold off. 61%. Looks like these guys are going to start dying off very soon. Let's see what this looks like from the defender's uh, perspective. So as the smoke clears, you see more projectiles coming in. And this might be the knockout blow for these troops. Yep. Very cool. Um, let's take a look at the legions moving forward. Armored troops moving up catapults destroying these guys and I think we should get a full scale collapse pretty soon so we're at 94 oh man out of ammunition so let's get these guys to knock that down one more hit and we should be good but uh, I think we've sufficiently um, hurt the defenders here we should be able to move in with our legionnaires and I think the towers uh, the siege ladder should be able to move up soon I'm gonna go ahead and tell these guys move up against the wall and bingo, looks like we collapse another group here. Let's take one of our last shots. Help the, hit the tribesmen there. Looks like they're going to start fleeing. So let's go ahead. Get these guys to just walk right up here. And we're going to send them both um, up through here, through here. And I think we'll worry about getting these guys within sight. Uh, let's just let the, uh, the legionnaires absorb the fine. We're going to go into first person and see what this looks like from their perspective. So very cool. Already you have some of the defenders shooting back at us. The tower is probably going to chime in soon, but uh, that's not going to do much. They changed some of the mechanics of the uh, Testudo, so now I believe it does work correctly. They increased... Oh, and look at that. You even see some of the uh, the slings, or not the slings, but some of the rocks ricocheting off the shields and coming up towards the screen. I love those little details and how every uh, little particle is rendered. Looks like some of these troops are being uh, hit by the tower pinpoint accuracy on those but uh, that's fine those guys are gonna be some of the auxiliary uh, auxiliary troops so I'm not too worried about those guys they can take their losses and I'll, I'll deal with it so we lost one of our men so okay looks like they're just freaking out um, looks like we still have some problems with the climbing of the walls but let's go ahead and set three of them there he's gonna come over here oh my god so I think we're just going to have to go ahead and send everyone in here. Um, send these guys up to here. These guys are going to hold out. Well, these guys are going to try and uh, distract them enough. I probably should have sent some other guys over here. Um, let's get these guys over here. While the towers are distracted, shooting at our armored forces, let's move these guys up through here. And then uh, we should be able to take out most of these guys who are clumped up. I think these guys are going to have to be activated into frenzy mode. Let's go get those guys involved. I think I'm going to position some of these guys here on the defensive. Uh, just wait here and send in some more troops just to throw their pillow. These guys are going to stay here and absorb the fire. Let's tell them to uh, to run up here. I took off formation attack because they are more effective uh, in that form. Let's move these guys up here. And let's get these guys just throwing into the mess right there. Use the whip. Get involved there. So I think we should be able to turn the tide there, especially since all the troops have been drawn over to that side. This is kind of like what you would have seen at uh, Gergovia when Caesar is able to draw some of the attention of the Gauls on one side and an attack unprotected. Of course this is on a much smaller scale. I think at this point let's just break Terrestudo and all out run. I think it's going to be better just to do that because they have our flank uh, anyways. So let's go ahead and just run our forces through here. And I think we might even be able to run our cavalry up into here and that should be able to secure a victory pretty soon. Let's keep these guys firing at these troops here, quick reload, just hit whatever they can. Let's move these guys around here. And it looks like already these guys have been decimated. Uh, let's burn down this tower then. Send one of the guys. Oh, it looks like they have another series of walls that they can defend. So he's going to cut off any guys who are retreating. These guys are going to just help uh, burn down the tower. Let's get these guys 
involved in the fight here. Send some guys over here. Going to burn down that wall here. And here come the cavalry, so that's going to be good enough to knock out those troops here. So let's watch this fight. So this is something that I think was missing in the Grand Campaign, was these settlement battles right here. We have tons of towers, uh, a lot more detail. And I think with the number of tribes that you see and the number of settlements, we'll be seeing a lot of armies uh, marauding around the campaign map, especially when probably with the... Um, the Gauls are going to unite, then you'll see all those tribes, kind of like in a realm divide type of thing that you saw in uh, Shogun 2. So I think once all those tribes rally against Rome, um, and I think they have a mechanism sp uh, specifically for that, um, it's going to be pretty insane, the uh, the amount of ridiculous battles that we're going to be having. Anyways, let's go ahead and charge everyone right through here and slaughter these guys. It looks like we have our auxilia. Uh, Celtic warriors are going to be surviving this battle, so that's fine. Those guys are mostly my fodder troops. I don't care too much about them. And it uh, looks like we're going to continue this just so I can slaughter the rest of these guys. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this. And uh, let's make sure that these troops are finished off and watch the, probably the burning tower is going to be representative of our victory here. There we go. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm enjoying this so far. Let's go ahead and end the battle and go back onto the campaign map. So, pretty good start to the game. Looks like they had 1,200 men, and that was only in a garrison force, so you can imagine some of the other cities I'll be fighting uh, who have garrisons plus tribal armies in the vicinity. So, um, now we have to decide what we're going to do with this city. Uh, historically speaking, Caesar would have done a variety of things. He would have taken, actually, the opportunity to do any of the following. He would have easily either occupied a settlement, uh, looted it, subjugated it or even raised it, depending on what was most politically expedient at the time. So Caesar was probably an amoral man. He wasn't immoral or moral. He was just doing what was most politically expedient. So he was known for his clemency, and if tribes uh, were kind to him, and they, if they helped him and showed loyalty, he would be uh, very um, rewarding to them. But at the same time, he would also take the opportunity to punish those. He killed many uh, cities and sacked them, and he was, uh, in his commentary, said that uh, throughout his whole campaigns, about a million Gauls ended up dying through his campaign. So those are probably exaggerated numbers, but it doesn't quite exaggerate the brutality that some of the legions exacted on the Gallic troops. So let's go ahead and um, money gained, subjugation, so I think looting is probably going to be the best thing. 1631, let's take that money and help pay off Caesar's debts. And it looks like we've even upgraded in our skills as a general. Imperium has increased, so I get spies, dignitaries, champions, and more armies. Even fleets. I'm wondering where we'll use fleets. Probably when we do the crossing into, uh, wow, this is far away, into uh, the isles up here. So the crossing, it looks like it's going to be here. It's a little shrouded, um, but yeah, we're going to have to construct a fleet to go over there. So Caesar actually did that. He even crossed the Rhine into uh, Germany. So Caesar definitely went all over the place. So let's look forward to that. In any case, let's go ahead and see what we can do with our legion here. Uh, sanitation, building costs, stuff like that. So it looks like we're going to have a lot of choices. What I like to do actually is hold off on the upgrades, wait till I have more skills to choose from. So I'm going to wait for that. Um, Caesar's own forces are going to start... Um, replenishing. I'm going to let these guys auto replenish. I'm guessing um, with minus 80 uh, I'm going to have another rebellion on my hands, but that's fine. I'll just keep Caesar stationed here. And minus 6, minus 4, minus 4. So it looks like I have to def definitely take care of these cities here. So it looks like he's one turn away. That's not going to help him. So Genoa is going to have the water tank to help that. And these cities up here Consecrated ground, public order. Um, I'm tempted to do that. Let's go ahead and build the amphitheater here with some of the earnings we had. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be a problem for me if these cities get too angry. But I think that's something cool that they have in Caesar and Gaul because it means that if you go ahead and conquer on here, all here, I'm guessing um, that a lot of them are going to have similar problems. And so that means that we'll probably see the massive uprising that you saw historically once Caesar conquered most of Gaul, there was that uprising in the winter. Uh, anyways, that's going to be probably about it for turn one. I'm going to keep it short and simple and, uh, yeah, just get you introduced to the campaign and Caesar and Gaul. So I hope to bring you guys more and I hope you guys enjoy your uh, holidays and you have a good break. So I'll see you guys next time with part two. Peace out.